the Trinity is an attempt to provide a philosophically defensible account of how Jesus can be both God and not God. But that problem had already been resolved in the Hebrew Bible in a much different way. Hey everybody, I'm Dan McClellan. I'm a scholar of the Bible and religion, and today's fit is the main man. And when Christians look back at the New Testament, they saw a variety of different perspectives on Jesus' relationship with God, and they imposed a unifying philosophical framework upon these texts to try to come up with a single account of how Jesus could be both God and not God. However, the different perspectives were not really that philosophically informed, and they were not unified. And so that is imposing unity upon disunity. And again, the Hebrew Bible had already resolved this issue with the angel of the Lord, who's represented as both God and not God. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, the angel of the Lord is Jesus. And that is a later dogma that has problems of its own, but that doesn't address the fact that the Hebrew Bible also already resolves how the angel of the Lord could be both God and not God. And we see this representation in stories like uh, Hagar in Genesis 16 and Abraham in Genesis 22 and Moses in Exodus 3 and Gideon in Judges 6 and Manoah and his wife in Judges 13, where the narrative and the characters go back and forth between referring to some entity as either God or Adonai or the angel of God or the angel of Adonai. Now, originally, these stories were about God themselves interacting directly and physically with humanity, but that became theologically unpalatable around the time of the exile, and so editors came in and added the word malach in Hebrew to the text, which means messenger or angel, and they didn't do it everywhere, but in just enough places to create this obscure notion of the angel of the Lord who is somehow both God and not God. And the explanation of how that can be is found in Exodus 23, where we have God telling the Israelites, look, I'm sending an angel before you to guard you on the way. Don't disobey him. Don't tick him off because he will not forgive your sins because my name is in him. And this statement, he will not forgive your sins, is word for word precisely what we find stated about God as the jealous God in Joshua 24. He will not forgive your sins. The Hebrew is identical. And so what's going on in Exodus 23 is we're attributing this thing that is stated only about the jealous God to the angel of the Lord and then saying, how can it be that the angel can do what only God is supposed to be able to do? because my name is in him. We get this concept of the indwelling of the name, which is related to how divine images were activated or enlivened in the ancient world. And so according to the logic of the Hebrew Bible, the angel can be both God and not God by possessing the divine name. And this is elaborated on in Greco-Roman period Judaism with other figures like Yahweh in the Apocalypse of Abraham, like the Son of Man in the Enochic literature, like Metatron in later Rabbinic Judaism. And what's going on in the New Testament is all of these explanations are being consolidated in Jesus. We have a bunch of different perspectives that are basically building on this idea that Jesus is the possessor of the divine name and therefore can exercise God's power and authority and can also manifest the divine presence. If you'd like to hear more about how this is going on in the New Testament, my next online class is called Is Jesus God? The Christologies of the New Testament and it will take place on Sunday, March 24th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Going to do about a one-hour presentation followed by about 30 minutes of a live Q&A. Everybody who registers will get a Zoom link the day before and then will get access to the recording of the class the day after. And you don't have to attend. If you can't make the live recording, you can still register and you will still get access to the recording the next day. As usual, registration is on a pay what you like basis. If you'd like to join us for a dollar, you're more than welcome to join us for a dollar. You can see how to get there on the screen. You can get to Didascaloi through my bio. And if you do happen to have trouble with the website, which is something we're trying to resolve, uh, we also have Venmo and PayPal set up. If this sounds like something that might interest you, I hope we will see you on the 24th.